How's it going, everyone? Did you miss me? It's been a while since I've done a YouTube video, and there's not been a whole massive amount of, like, new interesting content uh, to give you guys other than, you know, ROM hacks and my world record attempts, but I have been doing early hammer attempts again, which I know a lot of you really, really find excitement in grinding out to World 2, trying to time everything perfect and get that early hammer. But lately I've been doing it and a lot of things have been going wrong. Like I haven't been lining things up. I've been getting weird hammer brother movements when visually I think I'm timing everything perfect. So I did a lot of digging and I actually found out something pretty interesting. Me and another member of the community named 100th Coin, which some of you guys have heard of. I will put a link to his YouTube in the description below so you guys can check him out, subscribe to him. He does a lot of great work in the Mario 3 community. Without teabagging you guys too much, without cliffhangering you guys too much, I am just going to go right to uh, the, the part of the stream where I discuss and tell you everything that's going on because this is actually pretty cool and yeah, we never do this stuff, so check it out. No, the breakthrough is with the Manips. Now, a lot of you might not think it's a crazy giant breakthrough, but trust me, for what we're doing, it is. It's a tiny breakthrough, but still I think it's a break. 100 coin, would you think this is a mild breakthrough? This is still something very important that we needed to we needed to know and learn. It's certainly a breakthrough, see? So first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna load up the tasks like normal, right? For anyone who doesn't know what I'm actually doing like with the emulator right here is that I open up FCUX, I drag in a copy of Mario 3, just the ROM of Mario 3, then I drag in what's called a .fm2 file, which is the task, right? It's just the video recorded in through FCUX so that I can just literally drag the file onto FCUX. I know a lot of you understand how emulators work, but I know there's some of you out there who don't. So this is just the game right here. This is just Mario 3. It says no video at the bottom. It, it won't start until I press start, okay? So then I take the .fm2 file from Early Hammer, right? And then now the video started. Replay start, it's read only. I can't play the game. So now the video will start like normal. And then I add the Lewis script, which is accepted by FCUX. Very easy, boom, Lewis script added. So I drag that in as well. So now that we got that understood, this is just so you guys understand what the hell I'm doing when I'm doing early hammer manipulation, like how I'm running the emulator, okay? So now that we have the task going, we can fast forward. There's something called desyncing when coming to tasks and emulating it on original hardware. All the inputs put in by the tasks are working because as you can see, it's continuing and going. So as you can see, it's running nicely, right? It goes, it goes to the end. I'm just fast forwarding here. It goes to the end and it gets, it gets the early hammer. Now we all know, we all know that lag frames, I've talked about it so much in my streams. We all know that lag frames play a massive role in early hammer manipulation. Now lag frames don't necessarily affect the RNG counter per se, but what it does affect is where I visually think that I am when I'm not actually where I am if I line up with something that has less lag frames, right? If I visually line up with the tasks, but I've lagged 10 extra frames than the tasks, then I'm actually, like if this was the exact video right here, I would actually be on frame 23,415 if I lagged an additional 10 frames, you know? And I would jump on a frame that's not correct. But anyways, so because lag frames play such a big role in this, I decided, I you know, I wanted to know as much as I can about lag frames, and it's very common knowledge. A lot of people know in Mario 3 that your score, your score in Mario 3 plays a very big role in additional lag frames when exiting levels or doing pipe transitions, right? Um, depending on what your score is, you can technically get an additional lag frame when exiting levels or going through pipe transitions. It's possible. Something about the higher the digit, the more the game has to calculate uh, via digits depends on how long it's going to take an extra cycle to read the score and then process the next screen, right? This is, this isn't anything new. I already knew about this, but I didn't think it actually played a specific role in the game. So what I've been trying to do is follow the task's score. So an example is right after, after I beat one, one, I want to have the same score right? 16,000, 16,650. Let me just go ahead and unlock this and pull it open a bit so you guys can see a little bit better. 
right? So I, I would say to myself, I would say to myself, oh, if I exit with six, if I exit one, one with, with my score of 16,650, I won't cause any extra lag frames. Cause as you can see, the lag frames are right here. Everything will be fine. I'll also have 99. So higher digits in your score matter. So low, low digits, because the higher the digit, it's not the higher the actual score count, right? Like, like having 1 million exactly is lower than having 99,999 or 99,990 because this, you can't actually get a digit here, right? So the nines, nines and eights takes lo longer for the game to process the numbers because it counts the digits. I don't know. It, it's a whole bunch of hoodicky crap. All I know is that as long as I follow the task, even if the task did, did get an extra leg frame at the end of the level, so would I, right? I would still be following it because I have the same score. Silly old me, I was like, I, I contacted a hundredth coin and I was like, okay, where exactly am I creating extra leg frames with the task? Is, is the task creating extra leg frames with the score? If so, do I need to make sure, like my idea was, do I just need to make sure to copy the exact score from the starting until the early hammer? Is that all I need to know? That's all I need to know, all right? but it didn't end up being as simple as that. So what I did, I sent a hundredth coin, the .fm2 file, which is what I explained to you guys. The .fm2 file is the video that you play over, right? You just drag and drop it, there you go. So now the video starts. So I sent him that .fm2 file, and this is what happened, guys. He loaded up his ROM, and he let, he let it play, just like this. He let the video play. But this is the task of early hammer manipulation with the .fm2 file, and everything, everything's normal until you get to world two. Now check this out. This is what happened to a hundredth coin when he loaded the FM2 file into his emulator with his copy of Mario 3. I gotta build the suspense. As you can see, what? Excuse me? So this is what happened when hundredth coin. I mean, that was a nice, that was a nice star equip. Yes. So the task desynced. The task desynced. So that is that is very bad. Now we need to know why it desynced. And let me tell you, the early hammer manipulation task was made on uh, program zero versus program one. Right? If I load, if I load program zero in with the FM2 file, then everything's fine, right? If I play the video, no, that's ROM version. Everyone knows there's two versions of Mario 3, right? Now when I add in program zero, which is one of the, I can't remember if it's a later earlier version, the task doesn't desync. But why would that, why would that change anything? What, what difference does that make? Well, apparently my shirt right here, a spaceman literally fishing in fish or in space this shirt is actually epic and this video is actually sponsored by into the am a clothing company that i'm with where you can get 10 percent off even a shirt like this and let me show you how if you go to twitch.tv slash mitch flower power all you have to do is click on this big into the am picture and it'll take you right to their website you go to their website instantly you are greeted with 40 percent off basic tees and essentials, which is absolutely incredible. However, through clicking on that image with me, you get 10% off at checkout. So you can get any shirt. If you go to the top and you click shop all and click on graphic tees, you can go here and you can see all the images and artwork that they do with their tees. I'm sure some of you have been caught with me wearing this tree one. I really, really like this tree one. Uh, we have lots of different designs fit for everyone. I also own this shirt as well. I really like this shirt. I love the spaceman growing in the grass. I don't know what it is about that one, but I love that one more than anything. And there it is right there, guys. 
$24.99 into the AM offers affordable clothes for everyone. And with summer right here and right now, it's time for you to change up your summer look and try something new. If you're unable to go to my Twitch channel, then I will leave the link in the description below. You click on that link, you will be able to get 10% off into the AM. I highly recommend you check it out, guys. Take advantage of discounts. And I wear these clothes all the time. It's not just their design, it's how they feel on your skin. I really like it. I don't sweat, it's not too tight at the throat very comfortable and if you don't like designs they do have basic tees so go ahead and check it out and uh let's get back to the video thank you oh the initial us release is program zero okay it had typos but not just typos we all thought that program zero was simple text and changes with that but apparently program zero loads certain things different because we get a desync at the end of 2.1 apparently what happens is that you have a higher chance of creating a lag frame upon exiting levels in World 2. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Is anyone familiar with left and right bros? Anyone at all? Guess which one is program zero? Left bros. Guess which copy I was doing early hammer manipulation on? Right bros. Guess which copy desyncs with the TAS? Right bros. Guess who is adding extra lag frames to the run? Mitch Flower Power. So I was playing on Right Bros, following the tasks and getting extra lag frames. I need to play on Left Bros so that if I follow the score, I actually am going with it correctly. That is fucked up, dude. That is messed up. That is that is one of the weirdest things I've ever I've ever encountered. That is fucking wild. Apparently, the two version differences load levels into World 2 slightly different. I searched my entire house for a copy of Left Bros and thank God I had one in the basement. Left Bros and Right Bros have the, the bros right there, you see that? That sticker right there means that this is Program Zero, right? And we know, we know that Program Zero is the same um, ROM that uses for early hammer manipulation that doesn't desync because when we use Program 1, the emulator desyncs, the, the task desyncs because of lag frames. So ultimately what this means for my speedrun is that now I am not at a lag frame disadvantage anymore. Okay, so Right Bros, like, like 100th Coin says, Right Bros has a higher, more strictly odd of creating lag frames in World 2 upon exiting levels where Left Bros does not. So it is possible that during my early hammer manipulations for literally the past year, I could have been adding extra lag frames in 2-1, 2-2, and 2-4 by accident, but I would never know, and neither would Orange Expo. Why would anyone think that a version difference of spelling errors ran the game differently? Just, just, just this different. I can't take all the credit for figuring this out. I can only take credit for asking the right questions. Uh, 100th coin did all the beep, 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 beep. I'm smart, you know, mechanical. But I was just asking, I was plugging all the questions. All right, what's this? What's this? What's this? And we worked together and it was great. It was great what we came up with. But you gotta give, you gotta give 100th coin a lot of the credit because he does like the science. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to do this, so. Now, I have one last thing to teach you guys, which I think you're gonna find really cool. The sum of all digits in my score, let me see uh, 100 coin. The sum of all digits in my score, it has to equal less than 30, uh, 24, right? Okay, so a lot of you guys are saying, what the hell are you talking about add up? So if you look at my score, what do you, what do you get when you add all four of these numbers? You get 23, right? Nine, 18, 19, 23, right? So, <laughs> Because this equaled less than 29, it didn't lag. It didn't lag entering the overworld map. But on program one, so right bros, on right bros, it has to equal 22 or less to not create the lag frame. And since this is 23, this creates one lag frame on right bros. I've been playing on right bros, not paying attention to my score, which means I was probably creating lag frames. When I'm playing this game in World 2 on Left Bros, as long as my score adds up to less than 29, 
I won't create lag frames when I exit to the overworld map. I cannot believe something as small as version differences is what can create additional lag frames based on your score. What? What does that have to do with anything? I'm sure a lot of you just learned about the difference between left bros and right bros. And yeah, that's pretty interesting. The, the left bros was released first and they fixed it due to like spelling errors, small things. But why would that mean you'd create extra lag frames upon exiting and entering transitions? It, that just, that's just so weird. Um, I just want to clarify that the task does get the extra lag frame in 2-2, so I will need to be trying to get the extra lag frame if I want to copy it. And lastly, just because Left Bros has this advantage does not necessarily mean Left Bros is faster. You just have less leeway, I guess. You, you have to manage your score a lot better on Right Bros if you don't want to suffer from certain lag frames, so, um, yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something and keep an eye out for early hammer manipulation. I'm going to do everything in my power to make it as consistent as I can. I swear to God, we can do it. Thank you guys for watching. You have a good day. Whee!